interviews for oh, <laughs> okay interview for different um different organizations that you're applying to just like interviews all over the place right and so we just wanted to spend some time with you guys going over the basics of interviewing whether it's for an internship or whether it's for a different opportunity like how do you present yourself when you're when you're having a conversation about yourself how do you talk about yourself so um that's what today's about this is going to be very informal if you have questions come off mute um feel free to ask them in the chat um feel free to interrupt me at any time this is just like at any point you have questions feel free to just ask so with that um I'll tell you guys a little about myself, um, go into some behavioral interview tips, then practice those interviews tips, and then we'll go over some virtual interview um, do's and don'ts. And then we'll have like dedicated time for Q&A. Great. So my name is Raj Ranganathan. I am a manager at Accenture. I am part of our talent and organization practice. And what that means is basically when I do some consulting work for companies, it's usually around talent strategy, like how do their people work? How do their people like working at that company? Um, really everything that's like people centric, right? Like we're helping a lot of the work that I do is around helping companies solve problems that they have or essentially solution for um, challenges that they're facing within their own workforce. Um, I've been with Accenture for four years. And before that, I was I graduated with a degree in chemical engineering from the University of Texas at Austin, hook of horns. Um, and I worked in Austin for two years and then I moved to D.C. because I have a really strong interest in public sector and nonprofit work. And a lot of that work is centered here in the metro D.C. area. Um, a big part of interviewing is being able to tell a story about yourself. Right. So I wanted to introduce you guys to an activity that we do at Accenture, which is a journey line activity. Really, it is an opportunity for you to reflect on the highs and lows of your life. Um, I started with when I was born, which I consider to be a fairly positive thing. Um, and then I went to UT and then my first year was a little challenging. So I felt a little down about it. My first summer internship was not great. <laughs> um, it's actually, maybe it was my second summer internship. It was the summer between my junior and senior year. Um, I have a degree in chemical engineering. I work in people management now. So you guys probably get this idea that I wasn't that big a fan of my degree. Um, it was really challenging. I wasn't as STEM oriented as I thought I was. Um, and then my internship that summer was very process engineering oriented. And I was a horrible fit for it. Like it was just a really hard time um, for me to like get into that kind of working environment at a processing plant. It's kind of what like defined my decision to go into consulting and like needing to be in a more people oriented job. So from there, you know, some ups and some other downs and I've been on a general upward trajectory for the last like couple of years I want to say I like got into Accenture's nonprofit practice um, I moved to DC I became a program manager for a large national program centered around our internship engagement all of these things were generally positive but all of these experiences are experiences if someone were to interview me that I would use um, to talk about myself to talk about my experiences to talk about my skill sets um, every single one of these experiences um, are talking points, right? Why was my first summer internship difficult? It was because it was too hierarchical, right? Like it was a challenge that I had that, you know, I, there were people who were working for like 40 years longer than I've ever, like than I've lived basically. And they've been working this entire time and they were reporting up to me. And that just wasn't an environment that I was very comfortable in. And how did I overcome that challenge, right? Like every single point on here, is something that I can use to have a discussion with an interviewer. So something I highly encourage you guys to do um, before your next interview is to sit down and just take some time and map out like either professionally or personally 
for interviews that are, you know, in the professional nature, I would recommend like going through your professional experiences, projects that you've had at school, organizations that you've been a part of, scholarships that you've gotten, really just map them out. And then are, were they challenges? Were they achievements? If there were challenges, how did you overcome those challenges? Um, and that will help you kind of get together a storyline about what you want to say to an interviewer, right? So really, um, when you're doing an interview, they're looking at whether you're, they're looking at if you're a skill fit, if you have an interest in the work, and it, they're looking at if you would be a good, almost like good person to work with, like, would they be happy to show up and see you at work every day, right? So these are the kinds of like points that you want to think about as you're mapping out your journey line. Um, so any questions about any of that before I move on? Great. All right. Um, so let's talk about actually interviewing. Um, so we talked about a little bit about prep, um, but when you're in an interview, um, if someone asked you the question, for example, describe a time where you overcame a challenge in the workplace. It is really easy to get caught up in details. You're trying to figure out like how to tell the best possible version of a story. Um, and the method that I think is best for interviews is the STAR method. This is a methodology you can use when answering almost every question you get asked in an interview. Um, it, essentially, it's setting up the situation that you were in, what you were tasked to do, what you did against that task, and then a lot of people miss this last part, the result. What was the impact of the work that you did? So. If you frame all of your answers to interview questions within this format, then you'll cover everything an interviewer is looking for. Um, and then they can ask you like specific follow-up points related to a task, related to an action, or related to the result. But because you were organized in the way you gave them your answer, then they can be organized in the way they follow up with you. Um, and it'll just give you kind of like a clear path for answering a lot of these questions, right? So. Um, we're going to practice this in a minute, but has anyone used a STAR methodology already when they've done interviews? No. No, not yet. Um, so this is great. Um, this is a great introduction. Um, what I would actually do is take your journey line, and this is the engineer in me. I'm like pretty spreadsheet oriented. But what I did when I was in school is I had an Excel document. Um, and it had all of these different experiences that I've had. And then I would map them by situation, task, action, result. And then I would map them to key tag words. Like this was a challenge and obstacle I overcame. This was when I worked with a difficult manager. This was when I, uh, this is something that helped me define myself, right? So that would, it basically gave me like a study tool to study myself because that's the number one thing that you need to know in an interview is you need to know who you are, right? This is essentially like you're taking an interview is taking a test on yourself. Um, so the more confident that you are about the stories and the challenges and the like bullet points and talking points about yourself, like the more confident you're gonna come off in an interview. It's basically like the way you would prep for any school presentation. You're just preparing for a presentation about yourself. So um, yeah, any questions about that? Is that I have a question. I have also not used this format before. The task, so elaborate on the purpose. You're elaborating on the purpose of that task. Yeah. Okay. Um, so for example, uh okay, it could be pretty easy, right? Like my manager tasked me to go get ice cream or whatever. So, like, let's say you would basically start this off with. Um, I work at a big marketing firm. Um, we were having a huge client meeting around um, dairy products that my client was developing. Um, they wanted to do market research on different ice creams that are all, already available in the market. So I was tasked to go to the grocery store and create a selection of ice creams that would give them an example of what 
um, what they're competing against, right? So then what I did, action, sorry, this is a horrible example that I came up with right now, but it'll kind of help you guys get an idea of what's happening. So the situation was big client meeting, task was go get ice cream. Action that I did was I mapped different ice cream categories versus non-dairy options, dairy options, vegan options, gluten-free options, um, and then got, uh, you know, got the like ice cream that they were mapping up against and then different like map them against like different options like ice creams that have mixings in them ice creams that have different flavors in them and created like a varied selection to bring to my clients so they can get a good idea of what they're competing against and the result of this was for example this is not a real story. The result of this was the ice cream company I consulted for came up with 14 different new flavors to give them better marketing positioning in like in the marketplace. Does that make sense for what an answer can look like? Um, so <laughs> it, it's, it basically just gives a full synopsis of a story that you're trying to tell. Yeah, cool. Um, all right. With that, let's talk a little bit about preparing. So we talked a little bit about how you're going to answer questions once you're in the interview, but let's talk a little bit about what you need to do before you show up to the interview. Um, understand what role you're applying for, like the ins and outs, know the job description, know the company that you're applying for. Um, and then if you can find someone who is already in that role or in a similar role, it would be good to have a conversation with them just so that, you know, a job description doesn't have everything in it. They'll kind of give you like the somewhat like unknown challenges that they've discovered once they've been in that role. Um, I'll give you guys a quick example of what not to do. Um, I was in a, I was in a career expo, like a job fair. Um, when I was a junior at UT and I was still convinced that I wanted to become a chemical engineer. So I was involved in, down, I wanted to do downstream oil and gas. Don't know why. It's horrible for the environment. No I'm kidding. Um, I wanted to do, I wanted to do downstream oil and gas because that's just what my degree was about. It was about once the gas was out of the ground, like processing, that's what downstream oil and gas is. Um, there are two companies at the career fair that I always got confused, ConocoPhillips and Phillips 66, because they both have the name Phillips in it, and I'm pretty sure that they're the same company. But Phillips 66 does downstream oil and gas, which is the processing, and ConocoPhillips does the upstream oil and gas, which is getting the oil out of the ground. Um, and I walked up to ConocoPhillips and great conversation. They were just like, and what do you want to do here? And I was like, oh, I'm really interested in downstream oil and gas. And they were like, oh, we don't do that, you know? Um, so it was like a really great conversation. It was like 20 minutes, which is in the span of like the three hours I'm at a career for a significant chunk of time, but it was a waste of my time at the end of the day, a waste of their time because they didn't have a job that fit what I was looking for. And I just hadn't done like the enough of enough. I had, I just hadn't done enough research before I walked up to them. So in an interview, this is even worse, right? So know how the company that you're interviewing for is pronounced. The company I work for, our name is Accenture. I've heard Accenture, not right, you know? So just make sure you like go on Google, they'll tell you or like on YouTube, have someone pronounce the name to you. There are some companies that like genuinely like Schlumberger. It's, it's like spelled Schlumberger and it's pronounced Schlumberger, right? So it like isn't always phonetically said either. So if you are at all confused about how the name of the company that you're interviewing for is pronounced, go research it before you show up for your interview. Um, and if you're interviewing for multiple competitors, just be super careful that you don't show up to your interview and say the wrong name. I guarantee if you're in an interview with us and you say one of our competitor names, that's basically like you're gone no matter how good your interview is, you know, that's just it, right? Um, because people are very sensitive about those things. Um, so just do a lot of research, have a really good understanding of what the role is and who the company is before you show up for your interview. Um, and then like, try to try and understand, we just talked about the spreadsheet, right? 
what are the responsibilities for the role that you're interviewing for and map the experiences that you've listed out on your spreadsheet or on your journey line against the responsibilities that are in the role description so that if they were to ask you a question, if the role is like very heavily, heavily technical, and it's like, tell me about a time that you developed an app end to end, right? Or like the role description says, should be able to develop an app end to end, including back, back end and um, like front end development, then you should look at your spreadsheet, see where you've had that experience. And then if they were to ask you, uh, tell me about a time that you did front, like that did end to end development of an app, you would be able to bring that experience up. So, um, and, and then it'll also help if there's something in the role description that you haven't had a chance to think about, or you're not sure you can match that skill or the responsibility that they're asking for, you can go through your experiences and try to find as close a match as possible. Um, and so that covers your responsibilities and your skills. So that's how you would prepare for an interview. Um, I would say a lot of you are probably applying for very similar roles. So this feels like a lot of work, but most of the time you only have to do this maybe one or two times, unless you're applying for like 40 different role descriptions, none of them match, some of them are technical, technology aligned, some of them are finance aligned, some of them are consulting aligned. Unless you're like applying for multiple different job categories, you usually only have to do this kind of prep. I would say like once a year, um, when you're getting into the interview season or twice a year, or as you gain like new experiences. For those of you in college, like almost maybe at the end or the beginning of every semester, take some time to reflect back um, and add those new experiences into your spreadsheet so that when you're doing this part of the interview prep, you're able to like map back and forth. Okay, all that being said, we've talked about preparing what you would actually say in the interview. We've talked about how you prepare for the interview. This is pretty much the like secret sauce, the in-between of like the preparation and whether or not you get that job, right? Um, you're interviewing with a human being, right? Like really what people are looking for beyond do you match that skill set is that there's going to be a, a lot of people which match the role description, the skill sets that they're looking for. This part is what helps them figure out whether you're a good fit for them and whether they're a good fit for you. Um, one, when you're, we've, done, we've talked a lot about like mapping out your answers, but don't write out a script, right? Like this is a conversation between you and another person. It wants, you want it to be genuine. Um, so have those talking points in mind, but you really want to tell a narrative, a story that like, encompasses what you're trying to get across that also includes emotion. And when we say like, if, with like voice modulation and um, thinking about like nonverbal cues, I talk a lot, a lot with my hands. I tend to do that in, in an interview too. Um, it can be distracting at times, especially in a video call. So when I'm interviewing for something in a video call, I'll like keep my hands to the ground, but my voice and my expression will kind of get across what I like the emotions and like the earnestness that I want to get across, right? If you're in person, honestly, using your hands, not the worst thing, um, um, but you can also, you know, hold them in a power pose or whatever you want to hold them in just for your own comfort. Um, that being said, when you're in an interview, you're trying to tell a story, right? We talked about your journey line, which is about your story. We talked about star, which is the individual stories. Um, the spreadsheet is basically you writing like 10 stories about yourself. Um, and then you're gonna go in and you're going to be a storyteller um, about why you are a good fit for this opportunity. And ideally the person sitting across the table is also a storyteller and they're telling you about why their company is a good fit for you. Um, interviews are two-way street. I know sometimes when you're sitting on the other side of a camera or the other side of the table, it feels like there's a power dynamic where they have this opportunity that you want, but they should also want you, right? So you, you wanna look for a company that is a good fit for you, not just like any job, right? So um, see how they're telling a story about themselves. Do they seem tense, right? Are they talking about office dynamics where 
you're like, I don't know if that's the best for me. You know, when you ask them questions, like, tell me about your company's culture. If they say things like, if they say things like, oh, it can be very political or it could be, you know, um, kind of challenging to work across work dynamics, like think about like, is that a place where I want to work? So really kind of think about the fact that like the person across the, across the table from you or across the camera from you is oftentimes as nervous as you are um, because they also have a role and a spot they wanna fill. They, they wanna find the best person for that, but they also wanna sell their company to you. Um, as much as you're trying to sell yourself for that role. So it is a two way street. Um, so kind of see what their story is and try to tell the best story about yourself. Okay, I've talked a lot now. I think I've been talking for like 20 minutes. Um, so let's start with some questions if anyone has any first and then I think we are gonna break out into breakout rooms and have you guys answer some of these questions in the STAR methodology um, to each other. And then we'll come back and we'll have some people give examples of what they heard from other people that were good, um, some answers that they didn't think that, or some things that they think they could do better next time. Any questions? There, there are some questions in the chat. I think some ah. people were wondering um, like how to ease anxiety during an interview and yes. uh, also what's professional dress for an interview, what kinds of questions to ask at the end. So maybe those are good starting points. Yeah, let me start with, sorry, can we go one by one and can someone tell me what the first question is? Yeah, well, these are the expectations of what folks wanted to learn yeah. from this, but Makaili put in um, how to navigate difficult interview questions. Right. So ideally, you're prepared for the difficult interview questions before you show up now. But um, and once you've done like a pretty good like interview of yourself or done like this Excel document or journey line, most of the questions you encounter won't be that difficult. But let's say you come across a question that you just has you totally flummoxed. You've never thought of it before. Just take a beat, take a deep breath. Like don't get flustered in that moment because what happens when you start, when you're like, when your brain goes, oh, I don't know the answer to that is that you'll start panicking. And when you start panicking, you'll kind of like lose track of your thoughts, you'll become flustered. And then what could have been, you know, a medium answer could become like a really weak answer very quickly. So a lot of interviewing is just about keeping your poise too, right? So if someone asks you a difficult question, I would just take, take a beat, take a deep breath and think about, you know, experiences that you've had. And if you just don't have any experiences that you know, fit what they're asking. If it's, for example, like they're asking you for a technical skill that you haven't had yet, you can say something like, hey, like I haven't had an experience in that yet, but it's actually something that I'm hoping to grow in. Um, and so flip it, right? Like you're a learner, you're trying to grow. This isn't something you guys are what, 20? You haven't experienced everything in life yet. So the interviewer isn't going to be fully taken aback if you say like, I haven't had that experience yet. You can just say, hey, like that hasn't been something I've encountered yet. But um, it's an area that I'm looking to grow in. If it's a challenge, if they're asking about a specific situation that you haven't been in yet. For example, I was once asked a question. I was a freshman interviewing for something. And they were like, tell me about a time where you disagreed with your supervisor and what did you do about it? And I hadn't had a job yet. So I was just like, I haven't had a time when I disagreed with the supervisor. So I kind of thought about a time where I disagreed with a teacher about a project and talked about that experience. The other thing that you could do, which mm, I think this really depends on how well you're able to tell this story or how succinctly you're able to tell the story is you could give them a hypothetical. Like if I were to encounter this situation, this is how I would respond ideally. Right. Um, so it can give them an idea of your thought process then. Does that help? Yes, that helps. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, let's see. What other questions did people have? You want to do one more before you break out? Yeah, let's do one more. One is about um, overcoming anxiety when, yeah. when, in, when so, in an interview or in prep. Yeah. So one thing to overcome anxiety is 
a lot of what we talked about, which is just a lot of preparation. But I used to do like I used to have a like song I would listen to right before I went into interviews, like a pump up song to kind of give me confidence as I was going in. Um, I would also do like power poses in the bathroom before I like were walked into an interview. I would spend like a minute in a power pose, just like calming myself down. Um, power pose, have, you, Rush. have you guys heard of power poses before? Okay. So um, there was this TED talk by this woman who did this research on this concept where it's basically like, if you stand and you give yourself, like if you put yourself in a power pose, then your brain and your emotions will reset to give you confidence before you go give a speech or before you go into an interview. Um, so my power pose was always like the, uh, like, you know, power woman power pose when you're standing like this, I'll like go and stand like this for like a minute in the restroom, just like deep breaths. I have power and I have confidence and this company wants me more than I want them. Like I'll give myself affirmations and then I'll go into an interview. Um, and that kind of lessened my anxiety a bit. Um, yeah, so you can just do like, you can listen to music, you can do power poses, consider doing meditation, positive affirmations. These are all some of like the soft things you can do, kind of like the like prep, like body, mind, emotion preparation things you can do before you go into an interview. Um, and they work, I promise. I know the power pose thing sounds like absolutely insane, but it works <laughs> when you're just, because when you're hunched over and like you like feel small, when you make yourself small and your body becomes small, then you feel those emotions of anxiety. So when you like, you know, roll your shoulders back, you know, and you, uh, you hold your head up high and you are in that confident pose, then it'll also... I don't know, it'll, it's like a fake it till you make it mentality almost, you know, right? So you're faking that confidence so that you can convey the confidence and then eventually it's real, right? So that's something. And then I would say, just know that you've done your job, right? Like at some point it's, at some point the result, like the result can become super overwhelming, but what you're preparing for is the journey. So the result is up to somebody else. And here's something, here's a tidbit about corporate America, right? It's just that the reason why you do or don't get a job has some, it, it doesn't always have to do with whether or not you're qualified for that job. It oftentimes is just like, there's only a certain number of roles and they have to pick a certain number of candidates and you were a great fit, but like, it just wasn't possible this year. So really just do whatever you can to be prepared for the interview. And then the result is up to somebody else, you know, like you did what you can, and then don't really think about the result just because that's not your decision, right? That somebody else is making that decision. So once you've done your part, that's just all anybody can ask of you. Um, I interviewed for Accenture twice for a summer intern position before I got the full-time position. I was rejected both times. And then I still came back for the full-time interview. Um, the first two times, the first time they interviewed 50 people across campus. They took one summer intern that year. It had nothing to do with me, right? They could only pick one person. Um, the second interview I happened to, um, I just, like it was a summer internship and they again didn't have that many roles and I had asked for a city that they didn't have any positions in. like I really wanted to be in New York for a summer and they were just like that's just not possible you know so like a lot of these decisions are based off of things that aren't about your qualifications sometimes it's about location sometimes it's about timing sometimes you're too like sometimes it's just you're too young you're a sophomore you were excellent but we want to give the role to a junior right so um and then I still came back interviewed full-time, got the job. I've been here for four years now, gotten promoted three times in those four years, right? It's fine. It works out. Um, so it's like, it feels really nervous right now, but if you guys prepare, I promise it's going to be okay, right? There are so many things that are happening in the world outside of your control. So, um, that was a really long answer for that question. So why don't we do breakout rooms?
And um, when we come back, we could take some dedicated Q and A. So, and Raj, how can we get the questions into the breakout rooms? Or can you um, copy paste? Me, can I copy paste them to you, Victoria? Yeah, or put, if you plop them into the chat. Yeah, they go out to. Everybody? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, give me a second. Great. So you're going to be in these breakout rooms and you may or may not have one of the economic club staff or Raj in there. So we ask that you just um, facilitate yourselves through the practice. Uh, and then when we come back together, we'll hear from everybody. Raj, your chat came up blank. Oh, there are no questions in it. I don't know. I don't, does anyone else see questions? I see a blank question or I see a blank chat. Do you guys, do you not see this? In the chat, no. We can see it on your screen, but it's not showing up. Uh, interesting. Here, I'll, we can start just typing them in, but maybe to, um, Brenda, yeah. if you could drop everyone over to breakouts and we'll get, we'll get the questions into the, um, into the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hi, Arabia. Yes. Hi, how are you doing? Um, unfortunately, I am not able to stay for the duration of this meeting. I do okay. have a Zoom call with my professor. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I see. Uh, thank you. Um, Brenda, I see you made just two rooms. It's um. I'm it's I'm gonna room. split the people. It's only I only see two rooms. Okay. Can you go talk to Aaliyah and I'll keep moving some people. Okay. Oh, there it just all moved people. No, it says only two rooms. Hello folks, you are now settled into your rooms. And hello folks, you're now in your rooms. Please take the first question and just start working through um, the star example for the first question and then you can move through the rest of the questions. <laughs> 